my name is Jessica and I have no idea what I'm doing. Today I'm doing another makeup of interest video where basically I talk about some new and upcoming makeup releases that have caught my eye for one reason or another and then I ask myself two questions. Is it for me and do I need it before I buy it? First up today is the Artist Couture Midnight Maven eyeshadow palette. So of course I was attracted by the purples and the teal, but I don't really need the neutrals in there. So it's not really for me and I don't need it. I have colors like that already. Next up is the BH Cosmetics Golden Twilight Eyeshadow Palette. I like the purple, I like the greens, I like the blue, even the gold, but this is too muted for me. I have colors like this, so it's not for me and I don't need it. Next are some products from ColourPop. First being the ColourPop Burgundy Love Collection. So there are a lot of things in here. There's an eyeshadow palette, there are super shock shadows, or are they blushes? I don't know. Either way, I'm not interested in any of that. I like burgundy eyeshadow, but this is not enough for me, and the palette is too neutral. The Super Shock products are too muted. I don't need the lip glosses, but this isn't a great picture. But in another picture I saw, what I liked about them is that each one looks different. Like sometimes I feel like brands release a lot of lip products that look pretty much the same or they're way too similar. But these are actually pretty distinct from one another, at least in what I saw in that other picture. So that I like, but I don't need them. So you were probably asking, why is this even here? Because I'm interested in the Burgundy Mascara. I've been using the Sephora V for Volume Marsala Mascara, and I should probably get rid of it. But... I know that L'Oreal released something in Burgundy, and Burgundy mascaras are kind of like coming back around, so maybe I would have more options now to replace it, but this could be one of them. So is it for me? Yes. Do I need it? I mean, obviously I don't need anything, but I have a Burgundy mascara, I like Burgundy mascara, and I need to replace it, so I'm going to say yes, it's a need. The only thing is I want to know more about the formula, so I'm probably going to watch some YouTube videos and read some reviews. Then there are a couple ColourPop collaborations. The first is with Kathleen Lights, and this is the So Jaded palette. This palette is so tempting. First of all, I like Kathleen Lights. Second of all, look at all the colors. There's green, there's purples, there's a blue. There are peaches, gold, everything sparkly, but I really don't need this. I have colors like these already. It's a bit more money for ColourPop, and there are definitely some shades in here. Probably about half of them, if I rearrange the shades in this palette, that I don't care about. So as tempting as it is, I really don't need it. Another collaboration is with... That Girl Shea XO. I also like Shea, and that's really the only reason that this is here, because the collection that she curated here is just too neutral for me. But congratulations to her, and also congratulations to Kathleen Lights, despite me not buying their products. Sorry guys, I just don't need them. Next up is something I missed somehow, the Essence Crystal Iced Palette. I want to remove that top half of the palette, <laughs> the one with all the warm tones, the neutrals, the black. I obviously like the bottom half with all the blues and greens, but I really don't need it. I have colors like this already, and it's not even totally for me because I don't like half of it. Could I really get it anyway because it's not that much money and just get it for the colors that I do want? Yes, but like I said, I don't need this. Something else that I missed somehow was the IBY Beauty Ocean Awakening palette. Obviously, I was attracted by the blues. I do like the greeny gold color. The orange is nice. 
I feel like the more I look at this, maybe the more it could be for me. But again, I really don't need this. I have colors like this already. Also, well, actually, there are a few too many neutrals and only like one of the blues is shimmery. Eh, not for me, don't need it. Next is the Lime Crime Venus Immortalis palette. So this packaging glows in the dark, first of all, which I think that's cool, but I feel like the theme they went with here, I don't know, it reminds me kind of of death and like coffin, cemetery, statues. I don't know if that's what they were going for. It kind of seems like they were. I don't know. I, I don't care for that in a theme, but this palette is funny to me because Part of me thinks it's very dull because it's just all blah neutrals. We all know that I don't like neutrals that much. But on the other hand, I kind of like those two shimmers in there. And I think it's interesting how even though the whole thing is a cool toned neutral palette, there's still a nice range in here. And it may not look like it like at first glance. But if you really look, there are four that are more cool, cool neutrals, and then four that are a little warmer cool neutrals, if that makes sense. And it looks like you can really make some nice looks with this. But that being said, it is not for me, and I do not need it. Next up is the NARS Queen of the Night eyeshadow palette. NARS finally released a nice colorful palette. There are three shimmery blues in there. I love that. I like the green. I like the purple. I like the pink. Didn't really need the two grays in there. I like the silvery one better. The other one, eh. I do like most of this palette. However, I don't need it. I have colors like this already and it is just too expensive. Next up are a couple Natasha Denona products. First, we have the Metropolis palette, which the more I'm looking at it now, the more I realize that I was just attracted by the blue and the teal. But I do appreciate that they were shimmery and that that blue is a real blue, not just a tealy turquoise. But otherwise, if you take those two shades out, it's like, yeah, I like the olive green, the gold, and maybe like one of those cooler toned, almost silver neutrals. Oh, I guess a couple of the peaches too, but oh, really, actually she has some matte blues to go with the shimmer blues. Okay, that's kind of nice, but <laughs> there are still too many neutrals in this palette for me. So this palette is not for me. I don't need it. I have colors like this already, and this is way, way, way too expensive. The second thing from her that I'm going to talk about is the mini gold palette. Which for some reason is called the mini gold palette, but is it me or is there only one gold in here that's really more like a yellow? I see more greeny tones and neutrals. I mean, I think it's a well put together palette, but I wouldn't have called it the gold palette. I mean, I would definitely want to swatch it in store just to see what it actually looks and feels like, but it's not really for me. I do like a few of the shades, but I really don't need it. I have colors like this already. Next, I have a couple things from Ofra that I want to talk about. The first thing is something I think I missed. This is the Retrograde Highlighter. This caught my eye because it's just interesting. I kind of don't get it. I can't imagine many people wanting a gold yellow highlighter and a purple highlighter together like this. I mean, they're both too dark for me. I would have to use both of them as eyeshadows. And if you mix them, well, 
I was gonna say purple and yellow make like a brown color, but maybe that's what someone would be going for, like a neutral highlighter. Anyway, it's interesting, but it's not for me and I don't need it. Something else from Ofra is the Madison Miller Collaboration Collection. I also like Madison Miller, so congratulations to her. I think it's nice that this collection includes warm options and cool options. Like, you can definitely pair the cooler blush and the cooler highlighter together if you want to go for a cool look that day. And then, of course, the opposite. But I don't need any of this, even though I like some of it. And I think it's too expensive, too. And the last item I want to talk about today is the Viseart, is that how you say it? Viseart Dark Edit Palette. Obviously, I was drawn in here by the purples and creams, but that is barely half the palette. It's not really for me. I don't need it. I have colors like this already and too expensive. So, what do you guys think and what's on your makeup of interest list? That's it for today. I hope you have a good day no matter what it is you're doing. Bye. See you next time.